If you've joined us before in the business of golf, you know that we've been talking about how money is made and spent in the industry. We've spent a lot of time with industry leaders from leagues and organizations, as well as big brands. And today we're going to get a little more grassroots and speak with Nick Conrad, who's going to talk with us about how you can get involved in golf at an amateur local level. Stay with us here. This is the business of golf. Welcome into the business of golf. I'm Allison Johnson here with Adam Grubb. Adam, I have found this summer in starting to play in Christina's League, as we spoke about a few weeks ago, that I do not play a good game for myself if it's just casual social golf. What? When do you tend to enjoy and play your best golf? What, what's your situation? Casual social golf really? is when I play my best, 100%. If I'm in a, a tournament or in something for over a dollar, uh, I lose my mind, and uh, I'm, it's like a newborn deer out there. Uh, it's, it's very, very difficult for me. So that, that, casual, that casual golf is, is my, my, best, my best golf. Interesting. For me, if I'm playing casual golf, my ADHD comes out hard, and I, I can't even remember what I shot on the hole I just played. Like, it's bad. Now, I'm not a good enough golfer to where I'm playing highly competitive golf, but I like a little bit of a mix. I like to bet a little bit. I like you know, outings and scrambles and that kind of stuff. But I'm excited for today's guest because this is a newer, newer to the scene organization that is bringing golfers together that's social and fun, but also has a little bit of a spin with format. So it'll be interesting to hear about what they're doing. Um, we're joined by Nick Conrad of Twilight Golf Association, which is a national program here in the United States. Uh, Nick is a former football coach. So coming to to golf from a totally different place, uh, being a coach at both the University of Buffalo as well as Princeton, and is a Notre Dame grad. So I'm excited to welcome you in, Nick. How are you? Thanks yeah, for Yeah, thank us. you for having me, Allison, Adam. Yeah, it's great. I'm uh, really looking forward to getting a chance to, to introduce and talk to you guys more. Well, we're going to get right into it. First of all, we love, the, we love the branding with the shirt. Fantastic. It's always a good thing, especially as a newer business. Um, so talk a little bit about what it means to be a member of Twilight Golf? Because I saw that you're actually a USGA uh, member club. So what does that mean? Yeah, absolutely. So um, Twilight Golf Association is a membership-based club, uh, which means that our, our golf association is 100% member-funded and member-run. Um, we are a USGA member club as of last year in 2020. Um, and all that means is that all of our leagues and outings, um, we, we play by USGA rules, right? So USGA um, bylaws and, and, and guidelines govern every every outing and, and league we play in, just so that there's you know there is structure um, you know on the course. Um, we we send kind of all of the annual and you know updates on what rules are and whatnot. So we try to keep that um, you know same vision and parallel with what the USGA is putting out there, and, and really incorporate that into our play. So that's important uh, to, for us to be a, a member club in that sense. Um, but yeah, so like you mentioned, we're an, a national organization. I'm, um, I help organize um, a, a handful of our groups. Um, we've got kind of folks all over that um, essentially are bringing recreation golf um, to the people. Um, Twilight Golf Association actually started in 2018, so we're in our, our fourth year right now. Um, it, it's obviously an exciting time in golf. Uh, hasn't always been that way. Um, when, you know, first started, it was really, um, you know, how can we get everyone together just to play golf, um, right? Because myself personally uh, just found myself asking the same questions as uh, the common golfer does. How can I play more? Uh, as you mentioned, I, I had made a, a career switch and, you know, just found myself going to my local courses after work. Um, and, you know, you, you see yourself playing with all different types of, you know, people, whether they're older than you, younger than you, you know, men, ladies, all different ability levels. And it got to a point that I... I realize it doesn't really matter who you're playing with and that most people can, you know, get along and, and golf is such a uh, common thread that everyone has, you know, some part of their game you can relate to, whether you're a professional or a beginner, um, you know, that everyone has, you know, can relate to struggling with hitting the ball at the tee or, you know, missing a putt. Um, there's a lot of common ground that can be found in this game. So that's what really struck me about golf. And that's why I, I jumped in feet first and said, um, well, what if, you know, I started asking a lot of what ifs, what if, um, there was like a governing body that was organizing, you know, recreational golf leagues because that really didn't exist outside of, you know, 
the courses, what they offered at the house level. Um, and so, like I said, I, I started asking a ton of what ifs. And I think, you know, over the last couple of years, you brought in a lot of the right people to help do it. And there's a lot of other people's fingerprints on, on our golf association that have really made this great over the last few years. Um, and, and I'm excited about where we're heading. But uh, essentially, it is, um, you know, a, a club that has open to anybody uh, who's looking to play more often and in the same spirit as other rec sports. Um, I, I found it easy to find, a, you know, an adult basketball league or an adult softball league. And you can find that almost anywhere you go, but it's, it was hard to find that same spirit in golf. And that was the why um, of, of, you know, kind of the, the start of what about just a, a you know, a night association or, or where people can fit in golf uh, more regularly. Well, that's, and that's a great point I was going to bring up is that there are adult leagues. There's, there's rec leagues all over the place for every sport, including disc golf, but there aren't, uh, the rec leagues that, that have this governing body and or association or people that are, that are helping support it. So in, in essence, if you were to, to boil down what you do in one sentence, it is a adult, uh, or, or even kids in some cases, but a, a rec league for golfers that they finally have, uh, a, kind of a cadence, a weekly cadence of, of some sort of play that they would go out and play the nine holes or 18 holes. They play in the evening time. They play when, when, when that happens. Do I have That's that That's right? exactly it. Yep. It is a, uh, like you said, it, it's a cadence and uh, we have the same format, the same, um, you know, outline um, at, a, at a small course in a small town of Pennsylvania as there is at one of the largest, you know, municipal courses in Los Angeles. It's the, everyone's playing under the same uh, guidelines and, and it's really, uh, I think our format makes us unique. Um, I, you know, when we kind of got started and, and, you know, as, as it's evolved, it's really, uh, I think our leagues make it easy to play golf, which is, you know, I listened to the podcast a few weeks ago with Susie Whaley. Um, and one of the things she talked about was, you know, how breaking down the barriers is so important to keeping people engaged in golf and that, you know, we need to continue to find, you know, find a way to break down barriers um, and, and our format, I think, is, is one of the ways we do that, uh, where everyone can play their own ball, which is, I think, so important for, you know, self-improvement and, and not feeling pressure, um, you know, if you're just playing, keeping your own score um, and, and playing your own ball, and then also having a team element. So our, our format does, um, we, we use the two best scores from, from each hole. Um, so it's kind of, it makes it a little bit of a team effort where one person can't carry a team and, and you know, on, on any given shot or hole, you know, everyone can kind of contribute um, at, at some point during the round. So, um, but yeah, that's a little bit about our our um, format. And like you said, um, we're, we're a governing body, um, but we're also, I think, a, a social group for, for many people um, who, who find, uh, you know, getting together one night a week, uh, just a way to meet up with friends, neighbors, meet new people. Um, you know, it, it's, it's many things to, to many people. So one of the things that I find similar between us at Stick at Hack and with what you're doing is D&I seems to be in your DNA, right? So when you founded this organization, it wasn't a men's and a women's separate. You created an adult league. So, you know, one of the things we've talked about across the industry is how do we keep people in golf? And I think seeing new ways of doing things is one of them. Obviously, you're a little bit younger than, than Adam and myself. Um, do you think this is generational? Like you came to this thinking, what, this is just the way you do it, or we want to shake things up. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I totally, um, totally wanted to, uh, I guess, shake, shake things up in the sense that, um, I saw, I saw two opportunities and the first was, uh, what we've talked about, you know, for, for players, um, you know, again, it's the same group of people. If you go to your local course, uh, you know, five o'clock after work, it's the same, group of, of folks, it seems like, that are rushing to get there after work just to play nine holes. It's like, okay, how do we organize those people so that they have a reason to keep coming? And then the other side of it was, you know, golf courses. I think golf courses um, really don't get enough credit for all of the work that it takes just to run a facility, and especially um, on a weeknight, right? So, you know, they've got um, their hands in, in so many different operations, whether it be, you know, course maintenance, running a pro shop, running a a grill room, and oftentimes, you know, when we're operating, you know, say our leagues are on a Tuesday night or a Wednesday night, you know, those are some of the nights that, you know, they might be short-staffed or, you know, they, they, they're not going to be as busy regularly as, 
as they would be on a weekend. So uh, offering programming like this can be challenging. And so I, in, in a lot of ways, it was twofold. I, I think what we're doing is a, is a great solution for courses. I know a ton of them we've been working with now for in, in four years. Um, they've seen you know their tea sheets go from being you know empty and closing early on a Thursday night to now, hey, we've got 40 people coming and you know we're going to need to keep the restaurant open till till nine o'clock. Um, so that has been one of the a really cool impact as well um, that that we've kind of seen. But that was um, I guess when I, getting into it, what I thought it was going to be is. Yeah, I thought that, you know, I said I didn't see any reason why the model of adult softball, rec basketball, flag football, volleyball leagues just couldn't be applied to golf. And the reason it couldn't easily be done is because it's not as simple as just renting a field or renting a course or, you know, buying out, um, you know, a basketball court for a night. It's, you know, golf courses are complex and the, the business of golf um, is is one of hospitality. It's not uh, simply, uh, you know, just you know, like I said, buying out a field. So I, I realize that somebody needs to be that person and not every community has someone willing to step up and take the time to, you know, put thought into emails and, and T-sheets and scorekeeping and those sort of things. So that was really what, um, from, from the outset, you know, why don't we just try to do this full time and, and see if we could really make something great out of it. What have the uh, golf courses said to you, Nick, uh, and how's the reaction been? What's the excitement been? And, and you talk about the long, I mean, we at Stick and Act know that that long tail of building a brand and a community and, and, and excitement around, around something new and innovative in the golf space. This is it. What are you hearing from the golf courses themselves? Yeah, I mean, for many of them, like I said, it's, it's, a, um, it, it's a way to fill their tee sheet that in, in many cases they hadn't before. Um, you know, now – you know, this year we're obviously experiencing um, an uptick in popularity. Um, they're seeing a lot of new faces is what I, I hear a ton of, um, whether it be the, the PGA instructor at the course or the general manager. They'll say, hey, this league is great. There's a lot of people here that we've never seen before, um, which is, I think, always great to hear. Um, and in many cases, I'm, you know, we're hearing, um, hey, we've got another night of the week open. You know, can you do something there for us? Um, you know, cause we'd love to have this two nights a week. Because um, I think, you know, what we're doing is, isn't unique um, in any sense. It's really, like I mentioned before with our format, you know, you're playing your own ball. Um, who doesn't want to do that, right? And uh, um, you get to play with a group. And we're running short-run seasons, which I think is also an approachable, um, you know, adjustment from what courses normally offer. You know, you, your average golf course, I've, I've seen some of them start to change some of their house leagues too, especially at the places we're working with. Um, they would throw out there a league, right, or a week and a monthly outing that goes from April to October or April to September, you know, in most areas. And that's tough to commit to for a full year to feel engaged. And, again, going back to that topic of engagement, how to keep people engaged, well, I think it's giving people and giving golf something that can be, you know, grasped and, and understanding that people can't, you know, maybe commit to a full year, your average golfer. But if you give them a subset, hey, Here's a, a nine-week season, which is what every season that um, we organize is nine weeks. Um, you know, we break it up. We'll do two or three seasons a year um, in the in the nine-week segment. And golf courses, uh, they they really like that because they're saying, "Hey, we're we're seeing the engagement stay there all year long because you know you're giving some people a chance to jump in. Um, you're giving some people a chance to you know play all year if they want to. Um, I'll give you one example. There's you know whole team of bus drivers from a local just school district that they can't play in the spring season because schools were you know just finishing up in may and i was just on the phone with them earlier this week and they're all signed up for a league that starts you know in two weeks because hey this is when we can play um, but had that league started in april you missed that customer you missed that opportunity to, to engage with uh, with those people who wanted to play golf because the season was maybe too long and they were they felt that they were late jumping in so um, but yeah, it's been a ton of great feedback. I just, favorite part of my job is, um, is besides our members is, is kind of daily conversations and just kind of checking with our, our course partners. Cause, um, I know it's such an important part of their business too. So you're adding business to golf courses, which is always great. You're filling this niche where most leagues in the past were, I know for, as a woman, it's like, Oh great. We can play Tuesday at nine. And I'm like, okay, full-time job and kids, right? Never been able to play before, which is why I joined Christina's league locally with golf for her. Um, 
you know, talk a little bit about that competitive edge. So when you've got these people playing, I know that you've got some other cool stuff you've, you're in the process of rolling out to continue to offer new and different solutions. So what, what happens at the end of those seasons? Yeah, so um, each of our seasons, they run pretty similar to the PGA Tour, like with the FedEx Cup. So they do have the point standings uh, where we keep track, um, and if, you know, for, especially for those people that, that want the competitive edge, um, we've got it. Um, if you don't really care about the points, you don't have to look at, uh, at the standings necessarily, but we give everybody points just for just for playing. So um, it's all in good fun. Um, I, I think it's one of the really cool things about what we're doing is, and it goes back to our format a little bit, We've had some former PGA Tour players that are now like retired and living in, in between Arizona and Florida that have played in some of our leagues, and they play right alongside beginners. Um, and we've been able to adapt our format to handicap that, which has been really fun um, you know, to kind of see. It's like, hey, this works almost in any scenario of whomever comes uh, to play. Um, and so, yeah, we're, we're accommodating people that are competitive, uh, at the end of each season, we uh, in a lot of areas right now, we're, uh, we did this last year, we're, we're doing it again this fall, we're organizing Tournament of Champions, so if you win your league, just as an added invite, you, you get to play in, in, in a tournament, whether it be at the state level um, or at your region level, where it's just an extra an extra day to get out, an 18-hole round, um, and, and represent your course. Um, I thought last year, when, when we started doing that, people had a lot of fun where they got to say, hey, you know, I... I won my league at this course, and I'm from this town, and now I'm going to go represent us um, at this tournament. And again, you know, just an extra thing that um, you know for us as a membership-based club, always thinking about how can we continue to add value to our members and make make their time worthwhile. Um, I think that's a question that I always have to keep at the forefront of everything that we do um, because it, you know, and I, I know you guys have talked about this on the show before. It's you know, people's time and, and how they spend their money, um, it really matters. And it's, 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 golf is not a short amount of time and it's not a small amount of money to play it. So, um, you know, I think we need to continue to, you know, do everything we can to make it seem worthwhile for, for people while, while they choose to spend their time with, you know, whether it be Twilight Golf or, or any other, you know, there's a ton of uh, program out there right now. And like you said, we're just one, um, a way to consume golf, but, um, as long as we keep listening and, and keep trying to um, you know, make that value added, um, I think we'll be um, continuing to help build and grow the game. Nick, the uh, the $1,000 question here, and the most important and pressing question for me is, are you a stick or are you a hack? Uh, definitely a hack. Uh, like I said, I, I uh, transitioned uh, careers a few years ago um, and, and found golf was something that I, I wanted to do that uh, I had never formally played growing up, so um, I, I'm, I'm going through the whole gamut of, uh, you know, transitioning from, you know, just, uh, uh, learning how to swing the club correctly to, you know, now I've gotten to a point where I hold a handicap. I, I play once a week. Uh, ironically, I don't have enough time to play in any of these groups, which is the grand. Yeah. I've kind of tricked myself. Golf business, you don't play a lot of golf. How it goes. Counter- yeah. Yeah, so that was the first lesson I learned. But I do, uh, yeah, I've got, I've got some buddies that uh, I, I get out with. And, um, yeah, it, gosh, I, I'd like to think I'm maybe somewhere in between a uh, stick and a hack. But, oh, it's uh, true, right? That's I, I definitely, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's, uh, it's an endless journey. And uh, here's, what I th- here's what I say. Right now, if I can just gain one handicap number a year, by the time I'm in my 40s, I should be zero. <laughs> So that's where I'm. That's where my. That's where my focus is right now. Just get down I wish one I had number. That strategy because I'm in my forties and I'm not a zero. Yeah. Well, yeah. Nick, thank you so much for joining us. I know you're in between seasons now, so can people jump in for the summer season? Yeah, we're gearing up. We've got a great, um, you know, schedule that, that starts, you know, for summer seasons, uh, end of this month in July. Um, our website is www.twilightgolfassociation.com. So. Uh, if you're someone that's looking for a group to join, um, like I said, you don't need to have any handicap or you don't need to have any specific skill level to play in our groups. Um, we've got a ton of summer um, leagues starting soon, and uh, yeah, registration is fantastic. Is open. Thank you so much for joining us. Cool. Yeah, thank you guys. I really appreciate Thanks, it. Nick. So, Adam, what what stood out to me the most through this whole conversation? I didn't realize that they had some retired tour players playing in these leagues. Yeah. 
that just shows you how well the handicapping system works, right? And being a USGA member club, like, I mean, at the end of the day, if you can play alongside beginners to tour pro players using your handicap and have it be fair and equitable, I mean, that, that really is just such a testament to how well it works when you use, when you post a score and you have a handicap. Yeah, and I, I think the other thing that's cool uh, is just that there's somebody else doing the work for you um, and to help uh, organize some things because it is it is a pain. And we've got things at Stick and Hack that we'll be launching and, and putting out there, and we probably will uh, partner with Twilight Golf Association as I hear more about their story because um, that's one of the bigger barriers is just how do we even get involved in something that's not with the same people that I play with every single week um, but then to be in a competitive environment in, in, in some, in some fashion. So uh, I think, I think their relationships and what they're doing is, is fantastic. It's, uh, it's needed and necessary for sure. Um, and, and Nick feels like somebody that, that is starting his golf journey, uh, in, in a really cool way. So, uh, kudos to, to him. It's all good stuff. There's so many great programs out there and the more we can help to promote those, you know, the more the we can grow the game together. I think it's, it's, right. it's a lot of fun. So good conversation. Well, thank you for joining us here at the business of golf. We are constantly talking about what's going on in the industry as well as how money is made and spent. And we appreciate your time and being with us here at the stick and hack network.